Hello everyone and welcome back to Part Development in Kerbal Space Program. In this episode we are in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 with Realism Overhaul and I'm going to try out the heat shields that I've made, both the one with engine slots and with the docking port cover uh, in Realism Overhaul and uh, see if the configurations work. I basically copied the configurations for the lunar rated heat shields for 4 meter and 5 meter, 4 meter for the one with the engine slots, 5 meter for the one with the docking port. And here we have uh, Apollo command module with the docking, uh, with the engine slot one, so the 4 meter one. And it's also got UDM HNN 204 because we're using two of these engines in the slots, and they are the S5.92 engines. We, I've picked these because they had really high heat tolerance and uh, fit in the slots. They also have reasonable ISP for for hypergolic engines, but a lot of the engines really don't have very good... Uh, well, some of them are really weird. Like this one, it says that the maximum temperature is, what is it, 400 Celsius to 500 Celsius? Um, this one is the same engine and it's uh, rated for much higher temperatures, which it ought to be because the RS-68 sort of torches itself on launch. So uh, we've got three of the same engine here and each one has different temperature ratings. That's wonderful. Uh, but anyway, I just went with the one that had 2000 Kelvin and I think that's probably a good idea. Though uh, it's worth pointing out that there's another uh, variant of this engine here that has a uh, max internal temperature of 300 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin on the skin, which I I don't think that's possible. I mean, uh, obviously this this seems like it should be something different, but okay, uh, whatever. Um, I I've got my engine. Anyway, uh, we're going to launch it on a Falcon 9. I'm not really going to recover the core, even though I've put the landing legs and the grid fins on. And I've called it some Apollo because it's a small Apollo, right? Uh, small service module. But in this case, we don't have to dump the service module. We're going to carry it back down with us. Now, for the pod, I used uh, one of these. Hold on. There's a lot of pods in this. Mm. Oh, the, yeah. Here we go. Apollo Command Module Orbital Module and there's also the real Apollo Command Module here with a heat shield built in but I didn't want the heat shield built in this one does not have the heat shield built in the downside is it has lower internal max temp rating 500 Kelvin versus 900 Kelvin so we'll see how bad that is and uh, the same for the other heat shield that we're gonna test we're gonna test that on a Delta IV Heavy with an Orion capsule because the Orion capsule is 5 meters. Of course, these will be tweet scalable, but I just wanted to go with it as it is. Okay, enough talk. Let us launch Fogas, Elemi, and Nelsted and see if they can come back safely. Okay, here it is. And I gotta say, Apollo does not look too bad on the Falcon 9 as it is right now. I'll just fly manually. Uh, I could use the KOS script. I'll use the KOS script for the Delta IV Heavy the first time. If it doesn't get to orbit, I'll probably launch it manually. But here we go. Ignition. And launch. And by manually, I mean using Smart ASS, of course. Again, the benefit of this arrangement with the engine slots and the heat shield is that you don't have to dump the service module, right? You get to basically bring your service module down back with you and reuse it, potentially. And I made sure that the volume was uh, not only correct, but actually I underestimated the volume of it. So it could potentially carry more fuel in that same volume that I have. But I decided to just uh, underutilize it a bit. Unfortunately, I don't have any method of power generation on this right now. We didn't put solar panels. Nor does it have a built-in fuel cell. Maybe I'll fix that. Maybe I'll build in a fuel cell into this uh, particular heat shield with engine slots. The CH there, by the way, is charred of later. I don't know why it doesn't show the whole thing. Probably too long or something. Oh, let's throw them. 
Okay, separation. Okay, and launch escape system separation. Off it goes. And this is what we've got. Fortunately, it should have more than enough internal electric charge for our test. Though some of the electric charge you see up there is actually in the Falcon 9 upper stage. We actually have more than enough Delta V to potentially, you know, return the first stage and do all that and all that stuff. When you take a look at the, this stage Delta V with 7,000 here, we only need 4,000 of it. We could launch this over to the moon right now. Okay, and stop. So we have orbit 233 by 223. We have 2,400 meters per second left. Um, we could reignite and push ourselves to a high orbit, but not... I mean, we could manage a free return trajectory to the moon or something like that, but I don't want to. I think I'll rather just test it in low Earth orbit for now before we go any further. So, let's get that staging out of the way, and... Well, we'll have this left over. That's fine. Okay, so this is what we really have. Just uh, these engines, this heat shield, and a whole lot of hope. Okay. Alright. RCS works. Good. And, well, uh, let's have the engines boost us to a slightly higher orbit, and then pull us down again. I want to simulate it with uh, less fuel and I don't know if I have ship manifest in here. It doesn't look like it. Okay, so basically we can operate to a 1000 kilometer orbit circular, which is good. Okay, 60 kilometer periapsis. I don't know if we should... I guess I mean, this is a lower Earth orbit, and actually this pod, it doesn't have a descent mode, does it? It does not appear that this has a descent mode. I was wondering whether I should activate descent mode. It looks like I don't have a choice. So, okay. The question now is, what blows up? This shield doesn't look too bad like this, actually, right now. I didn't very much like this texture, but... It's not bad. Could definitely be worse. Part of the question mark is, uh, you can see the engines sort of stick all the way through and potentially encounter the capsule itself. So if they have very high heat conductivity, then the capsule's gonna overheat like that. But I don't think they ought to. Usually engines don't, but we'll see. Well, we're at uh, 70 kilometers and still no ablation. Mind you, again, this is a lunar rated heat shield. We do have some flame effects now. Uh, they're looking fine. Though there seems to be a cone around the pod itself. Though I think those are actually being generated by the engines here, you see. And they fan out. I think eventually I'll have to try this on a lunar trajectory because, again, lunar rated heat shield and... I want to see some ablation, otherwise this is overdoing it. Maybe I should tone down some numbers if it turns out that... Then again, this is really for Mars, and maybe... Well, there's a little bit of ablation. Maybe I should just leave it be. I just copied the numbers from the other lunar-rated 4-meter heat shield already in Realism Overhaul, after all. There is minor overheating indication on the engines, but nothing on the pod. And remember, its internal max temp was fairly low. Its external its skin temp was very high, though. And it's not really, according to the description, meant for re-entry, but it's handling itself pretty well right now. And things seem to have worked out all right, so good times. Engines still intact and everything. I don't know how fast we, we could be coming in and still expect the engines to be all right, but this is a start. Okay, full parachute deployment. 
And yeah, we're good. And even with a full tank here, I would expect that we would have a fairly low splashdown velocity. We're at 5 meters per second right now. So no problems. Not that this was really important to the test. We were testing heat shield, not the parachutes. Okay. On to the next test. Okay, so this time it is the heat shield with a docking port compartment, and we're going to use it to launch the Orion capsule with an MOL, a manned orbital laboratory. And of course this makes sense because actually with Gemini, which the manned orbital laboratory was supposed to work with, there was supposed to be a docking port through the heat shield so they could get into the lab. And here I've added sort of an orbital module with uh, actually the engines from the service module of Orion. Uh, two of them this time though, AJ-10-190. And the goal here is actually to leave the, the lab up there. So what's going to happen is that the lab is going to deorbit Orion, separate off from it, and then boost itself up into a full orbit again. So as a docking port on either end, so that we could sort of chain them up. And uh, this tank here has very low utilization, so we imagine a passageway through this actually probably should just be a structural part or a crew tube. But uh, yeah, they could pass through each lab in sequence and the labs would all dock up to each other. You can sort of imagine that. And it's got the solar panels on the side there. And all this is launched with a Delta IV Heavy. I had to underfuel the Delta IV upper stage because it has a really, 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 really long burn time. Otherwise, um, it's uh, it can have up to 18 minutes and 45 seconds, and we've got it down to 13 minutes here. And really, we don't want it to try and. <laughs> it's just really bad if you try and do it for 18 minutes to low Earth orbit. The 18 minutes is really meant for geosynchronous transfers where you don't have to worry about falling back down into the atmosphere and burning up. So, yeah. Okay. Alright. Well, it just wiggled all over the place and decided to go a bit askew. You can see it's not quite straight up and down right now, so... Hmm. Alright, let, let me try and revert to launch and see if we can hold steady when we load it this time. Okay, a bit of a bounce this time, but that's not too bad. As long as it's pointing up, that's a good sign. Alright, so... Um, let's edit Delta 4H and get the latest changes that I had made. And here we go. And yes, the script will throttle down the center engine. That's all baked in. Ignition. And off we go. It's gonna be steep with this and actually it's gonna toss the upper stage, the RL-10 stage, up to a very high arc. And then the RL-10 stage is going to take forever to do its burn and fall back down again before making orbit. Basically we're trying for a 220 to 270 kilometer orbit, roughly circular but not quite. But uh, we're going to be tossed up to like 420 kilometers altogether. Okay, and there we go. Launch escape system separation at 105 kilometers. And we have throttled down all the engines now because we want to limit G-forces. Getting ready for booster separation. And off the boosters go. Don't trust the time up there. It was starting to record the time before we even launched. Not too sure about these stragglers. I think I misplaced something. We've got extra, we've got an extra set of decoupling objects. It looks like. So my mistake there. 
Sorry about that. But not relevant to the test. Okay, separation of more things than I wanted to separate right there, but okay. I don't mind the panels they're separating, that's fine. I just didn't anticipate it. I thought I was gonna have to do that manually. I was still gonna do it because it saves like about two tons. But anyway, RL10 has ignited. We've got three minutes to apoapsis. Didn't get quite as high as I was thinking we would, but that's alright. As long as we don't go back into the atmosphere. We have enough delta V, but it's gonna take 12 minutes to apply all of it, so there's going to be some inefficiency. Well, we're on the downward leg as you can see, and we need five minutes more here. That should work out, but we're gonna be short a bit of delta V. We might need the service module engines in order to get us into a full orbit. We'll see. Okay, about to make orbit but not on this engine. We're going to have to use the next stage. Okay, we have made orbit one, uh, 291 by 160 and we have 342 meters per second left. I'm just gonna go straight for a deorbit burn and then of course we have to boost up the lab again to make sure it doesn't go down with the pod. I suppose I, I am wondering a little bit about how the decoupling is going to go. Oh, it's using MMH from up there, that's not good. Okay, decouple. Alright, that was a little bit of a kick. And I'm using these ports. The other NASA docking system ports are a little bit bigger. These fit somewhat better. Let's close. Oh, and this is tucked in more than I wanted. Darn it. It wasn't supposed to be tucked into the pod like that. I had removed the pod and put it back on again. Well, I guess we'll see what'll happen. Okay, but first... Do we not have control on this, or do we? Mm, I, I think I needed to put a control core. This man overall lab needs a Kerbal inside in order to control it. But in principle it could have boosted itself up. It's not our primary concern right now. This isn't quite the test I was looking for, but let's see how it goes. It'll be instructive. And here we have half of the ablator on the heat shield, so... And given what we had with the previous capsule, I don't think that's going to be a problem. The question is whether the heat shield is going to correctly protect the docking port, which actually has less heat tolerance than the goo containers in realism overall. So it's more sensitive. But I am worried about the fact that uh, the heat shield is clipped into the pod instead of just being on the outside of it. The docking port is very thin compared to how it looks in stock. Oh, there is a descent mode on here. Well, okay, fine. We'll turn descent mode on. I don't know. With the heat shield being the way it is, I don't know if turning descent mode on is even a good idea. Maybe we should just stay flat to the airstream. Yeah, so probably for the realism overhaul configuration, I should just move the, the upper node the upper attachment node just a little bit so it fits this pod better. It's uh, This heat shield is meant for this orbital Orion command module so I want it to fit properly. I think this is the one from SSTU by the way. So is the Apollo one. Well I'm afraid that the orbital lab is getting demolished but Again, that's just for want of a control unit or a Kerbal on board that probably will go with a control unit. Okay, we are below 70 kilometers. We are currently over the Gulf of Mexico. Might land in Florida, maybe short of Florida. But anyway, we're doing pretty well on our trajectories and getting close to home. And yep, not much ablation happening. The pod seems to not have any overheating indicator despite sort of poking below the 
heat shield on the rim. Then again, it's got a very high skin heat tolerance. Actually, it's got a higher skin heat tolerance than the heat shield does, surprisingly. And we're starting to get the flame effects. I sort of wonder whether the pod could, like, come back without any heat shield at all. It's an interesting question. And maybe the numbers on the pod need to be changed. Not sure. But anyway, the important thing is that the docking port does not appear to be in jeopardy. That's what we were really interested in protecting. The docking port has... Uh, see, max op... I don't know why it's showing me this, but max operational temperature 912 Kelvin and skin max temp. And... Altogether, we have not passed 4Gs from launch to return here. I think we we're just at 2Gs for the actual descent. Okay, well, despite the clipping, it's all good. Caps 2 protected, and docking port protected. No apparent problems. So, obviously there will be some tweaking to do as far as these parts. But I think it's good enough that I'll uh, repackage them with the realism overhaul configurations for these heat shields and you can use them as they are right now if you choose to. Of course the link to my assembly of parts will be in the video description as one zip file. But expect that further changes will be made as I need to move that node for instance and all of that. But looking good so far. Usable in realism overhaul. Oh, there's some land below here. Is this a Bahama? It's one of the Bahamas. Good times. Okay, and as we land here in the Bahamas, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.